Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day 12, and today's node is the Vellum Configure Grain SARP. To access the Vellum Configure Grains, we're going to be going to the SARP level. So we would just dive inside and Vellum Grains, right? You'll see Vellum Configure Grain right over here. This isn't the one that I'm going to be showing you first though. I want to take a look at if we use our shelf tools. So over here, I just have a sphere. And if we go up here, we can see that we have grains over there, but those aren't the grains that we're looking for. We want to go over to Vellum and over here, you can see Vellum grains. Click on that and it'll create two nodes for us. It creates an auto dotnet and this grains Vellum. This is just the output of our simulation, but the actual simulation takes place in the dotnet. And we can of course add things like a ground plane, and as you can see, if we play it back, we just have these grains that just collapse into a pile. All of the settings in this network have been set up to be working with grains. So as you can see, our sub steps have already been pushed up to five, which is recommended for when working with grains or vellum fluids. So if we go up a level into our sphere geometry, you can see that it actually added our vellum configure grains over here. So there's a few things that we'd want to take note of. Firstly, this over here creates points from volume. The other option is if you disable it, and this is how it is by default, it then expects points to be brought in, but you can say create points from volume and then it'll convert the sphere into points. The way it does that is through this regular grid method, but you can change that to sphere packing. We'll look at sphere packing a bit later. For now, we'll just look at regular grid. Over here, our particle size defines the size of the particles. A lower particle size means more particles. So if we push this to 0.05, you can see that we have more particles. 0.3, even more. This packing density over here is used to overpack particles. This isn't going to be used for when we're working with grains, but if we were to work with fluids, which is what this node is also used for, then we would want to increase our packing density. Increasing the packing density with grains causes it to explode when we first run it because we end up with overlapping colliders. Down here, we have physical attributes. And as you can see, a few of them are grayed out. Phase, viscosity, and surface tension. We'll get back to those in a bit. Down here, we have friction, dynamic friction, attraction weight, and repulsion weight. Now let's go ahead and assume that we want our points to kind of stick together and clump, which we would use attraction weight for. I'm gonna push this up to some extremely high value like 100. And if we go into the stop net, we would assume that our particles would all stick together, right? Because we have such a high attraction weight. But when we play this back, it has absolutely no effect. And that's because if we actually take a look at it, these options over here are multipliers. You can see that it says acts as a multiplier on the attraction weight parameter of the vellum solver. So I'm going to set this back to one and disable it and go to our vellum solver over here. On the vellum solver, we go over to the advanced tab and under grain collisions, this is where we need to affect our attraction weight. So if we just set this to some value like 0.3 and let this play back, you'll now see that we have grain clumping. Now our multiplier will work. If we go back over here to our grain configure, we can actually now change that attraction weight multiplier. So if we push it up to two, now it'll be an even higher value, right? It'll be two times the 0 0.3, so it'll be 0 0.6. So same thing with all of them, same thing with the repulsion weight and same thing with friction and dynamic friction. So what about these over here, phase, viscosity, and surface tension? Well, that's going to be for vellum fluids. So I'm just going to delete these three nodes that we created. Now, before we go look at fluids, because we are going to be building them at the sub level, let's take a look at how we would just build a regular grain sim at the sub level. So over here, you would go ahead and drop a sphere as we would before, and then we can use a vellum configure grains, right? So we plug this in and nothing happens. That's because you have to use create points from volume. The alternative to that is using a grain source. This is a useful node to use in conjunction with this because this grain source actually gives you some other options and it's just going to feed information into our vellum constraints over there. So if we go ahead and just decrease the point separation to something like 0.05, you'll see that the actual scale of the particles doesn't change. That's because we're manually setting the particle size over here. All we have to do is disable that and it'll fetch it from the grain source. So if we decrease this over here, then it adapts. Then it's as easy as just putting it into a vellum solver, right? So we take all three of these. We could just add a ground plane at negative one on Y, push up our sub steps to five for grains or fluids. And then I'm just going to add a tiny amount of attraction weight. And just like that, we have grains. So now that we understand grains at the sub level, let's go ahead and try this out with a vellum fluid. Now, the other thing that we can do to get that node is over here, right? I have this fluid example over here. And all I've done with this is instead of using the configure grains, I've used the configure fluid, right? Vellum configure fluid. 
But when we place this, you'll see that it actually is a vellum configure grains node. The type has just been set from grain to fluid. What this allows is access to the other physical attributes, such as viscosity, surface tension, and friction. And when we put it down, you'll actually see that it increases our packing density to a value higher than one. So what I've done is I've created that sphere, plugged it into the vellum fluid, and I just have a collider on the side. But what I've done is I've actually used these three values over here. Viscosity can be thought of as how much particles share their velocity with particles near to them. We also have surface tension over here, and this is just how much a fluid is going to want to hold together. The other one over here is phase, right? So this phase over here is an interesting one. What I've done is I've split a set of particles up into this fluid A and fluid B, so you can see it's separated by these two colors. Fluid A is the white one, and it's got a lower mass. This is going to cause those white particles to come towards the top. Right, so it's got half the mass of the other particles. It also has a slightly higher viscosity, so it's going to share its velocities, and it's got some surface tension. We also have phase set to one. Phase is a way of telling our solver that these are two different fluids. So if we have two different phase values, it's two different fluids. The actual value of the phase doesn't really matter so long as they're different. So you can see I have phase one over here and phase two over here. If they have the same phase value, then they'll kind of blend into each other. If you have this phase one and phase two, they'll be treated more like two separate fluids. So over here in our vellum solver, if we were to play this back, you can see that this is what we end up with, where our white particles rise to the top and our blue particles sink to the bottom. Our white particles have a higher viscosity, so they move more like a foam. So this is going to be a very cheap way of making fluids. The last thing that I want to look at is another node that actually uses the vellum configure grains. So let's go over to this node over here where I have copies. And all I have are a bunch of these rubber toys. All I've done is I've taken a rubber toy, I've made a bunch of grids, I've added an orient attribute that's randomized onto each point, and then I've copied all of these to these points, making sure to pack an instance, right? So I'm packing and instancing because I want each one to be treated as a single geometry. Now, if we go ahead and use the configure grains, you'll see that there's actually a vellum configure grain pieces. If we use this one over here, it actually uses vellum grains and a shape match. Let's plug this into the first input over here and it'll take a moment to calculate. But what you can see is that it's doing estimations of our geometry using grains. So each and every one of these is going to be treated using this over here. You can see that it's now using sphere packing. What it's trying to do is it's trying to pack a bunch of spheres into a geometry to estimate the shape of the geometry as best it can. What we can also do over here is just decrease our particle size to something like 0.07 which will make it more accurate, but it's trying to limit the amount of spheres that we're using. So we can actually disable max spheres. Once again, let it calculate. And this is going to be a decent estimation of our geometry. You can see from here to here, it's a fairly decent estimate. The way that this works is that it actually takes the connectivity of each piece and then adds a piece attribute. And we can see this piece attribute if we go to the geometry spreadsheet, you can see that it ranges from piece zero to piece 599. Each point is going to fall into a different piece. Then we use this vellum shape match. What this is going to do is it's going to connect up points that share the same piece number. So you can see that all of these constraints are making sure that all of these points stick together. So when they move, they move as a single piece. And this is interesting because if we use a vellum solver, we can just add a ground plane. And then if we play this back, this will behave like rigid bodies. All right, so each of these are behaving like rigid bodies. But how is this really useful? Because these are just grains. Well, this is where we're going to be using the transform vellum pieces. This node over here takes the vellum geometry as first input, the vellum constraints as second input, but then it takes the pieces as the last input, so the actual geometry that we started with. And then it deforms those pieces of geometry based on this vellum simulation. So this is a way of doing rigid body simulation. So that's all we're going to be looking at in this video. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the RBD material fracture sop. So I'll be seeing you tomorrow with that.